<coughs> excuse me, children, I'm not crying, I got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> I'm not moved. <laughs> I actually, uh, no one is going to interview you, I only found out two days ago, and last night I stayed up till about 3, 3.30 in the morning reading Gemma. Oh, you read so, Gemma? Yeah, so... Wow, you brave man. Yeah, so I'm sort of white-knuckling it today, but... <laughs> oh, I'll imagine, I was white-knuckling when I was writing it. Yeah, it is, yeah. It, it's an amazing book, and I, I read some of the reviews online, and everybody points to the fact that, you know, they're graphic moments, mm. and it's a very intense, emotional book, but I, I wanted to say, I think it's an incredibly beautiful book. Oh. I and mean, in the end, I was, I was really moved by it. And what is fascinating to me, is, even though it's not directly autobiographical, mm -hmm. is that you have this somewhat open-ended mm -hmm. conclusion, and yet it does still feel like closure to me. Yeah. And I, I was curious, do you think that this, the notion of sort of confronting, mm -hmm. uh, confronting your perpetrators is mm -hmm. really the, the act of closure? I don't think it out consciously when I write. I don't think things out consciously. So um, what, what had happened was it wasn't a way uh, confronting, but what it was was I, uh, the writing exercise was right from the voice of the other. Right. And um, all the people, various adults that had uh, sexually abused me or my family members throughout my childhood started flashing in front of me and I, I couldn't. I couldn't get into that head. And in a way, it was confronting them. In a way, it was, in the writing of it for me, it was saying, like I remember once I got a letter from my stepfather after I was famous, and he said, oh, I'm so proud of you, and I remember how much you loved me, and you running towards me in the sunset, and you were saying, Daddy, I love you, and I'm like, what has he been smoking? <laughs> like, what has he been smoking? And I, I got, um, I was very upset, and so I, I, that's when, you know, part of me when I was writing, singing songs, I was like, no, I want you to read this. So um, Gemma to me was my way of saying, I think a lot of times people, when say, oh, well, an Elizabeth Smart or somebody mm -hmm. like that, or those boys that were um, with that man, when they come back, people are like, well, they were right out there, you know, in public, why didn't they run away? Mm -hmm. I wanted to put people in the mind of the child abuser inside how he thinks and the kind of controls that these these people that I the kind of things they would say um, and and then for them to experience that but I don't think I answered your question <laughs> no, no, I'm trying. So in, oh, in confronting so in a way that was my way of confronting it was like right. no I'm not gonna whitewash you I'm not gonna Pollyanna right. you I am going to say it how I what was said to me in, in those types of things and the type of things that were done. But it is an autobiographical. And actually, right now, you can't get Gemma because um, St. Martin's Press has bought it. And so there we're, I'm doing a rewrite of it, and it's going to be re-released. In, in, in the book, mm -hmm. Hazen is, is not a family member, thank goodness, but he is. Hazen, yeah, but that's the name of my mom's boyfriend. That's right. Uh, but he, he gets a hold of Gemma. Yeah. And he has his pseudo-rationalizations oh, sure. for his behavior. Mm -hmm. And they, I, they think they're good guys. Right, and I'm curious how you, because I know that was part of the initial writing exercise, mm -hmm. to put yourself right. in the place of the other. Right. What do you think of those justifications and those rationalizations? How do, how do you, do you think they're legitimate? Are they to legitimate him? for them, to him? To them. Yeah. yeah. To them, absolutely. To them, but not to me, not in to my skin. Okay. But to them, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. But you think that you think there are perpetrators who clearly believe they are in the right. Oh, and yeah. In the good. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd hear, you know, dressing like that, you're asking for trouble. Right. Dressing like what? Right. You know. And so, stats are what? Like forty percent of abused kids may go on to... 40%, okay, <clears throat> That's, the stats are 40% of the convicted child molesters were sexually abused as children. Okay. Okay, I don't know how many people who were abused go on to be abusers, but there, there are, some people break the cycle mm -hmm. and some people don't. And I think it takes a conscious, I, this is somewhere I will never go, right. you know. Um, and I think the reason for it is it's, it's trying in some way 
to seize back by abusing somebody else and usually they do it around the ages that they themselves were abused so that's the target area that they're attracted to in taking it they're seizing back the power that they felt they lost as a child so they're trying to revisit that with a different outcome